demand an end to gun violence in what could be the largest demonstration in U.S. history. Good evening, I'm Sarah Trott. And I'm Jim Rick. Thanks for joining us. The March for Our Lives will take place tomorrow around the country and around the world as well. Many marchers arrived in Washington, D.C. today, including students from Parkland, Florida, site of a February mass shooting. Marchers want lawmakers to make safety a priority. The main march in Washington has inspired more than 800 other marches nationwide. One of those is here in Columbia. Rockbridge High School students will march. The demonstration starts at 1 p.m. on the MU campus. The march goes from the Columns to the Boone County Courthouse. 20 years ago, more Americans thought guns made people more unsafe. Fast forward to now, public opinion says guns increase safety, according to the latest poll from the Wall Street Journal and NBC News. Nearly 6 in 10 Americans believe owning a gun increases safety by allowing law-abiding citizens to protect themselves. However, gun control organizations still remain some of the most popular groups in America, and 48 percent support gun control organizations, where 32 percent oppose them. The poll also asked about support for other groups and found more Americans showed greater support than opposition for movements like Black Lives Matter, Me Too, and showed more support than opposition for gay rights. I talked with a gun store owner who says in his 20 years in the industry, he has seen an upward trend in getting concealed carry. You see a lot of people that are, are really kind of turning that corner anymore. A lot of our customers have been coming in and you know they see violence, they see unrest, they see a lot of different things being reported and it just kind of scares them. They're like, what kind of world are we living in today? I want to make sure that I and my family are safe. Moms Demand Action, a gun control group, said in a statement to KWMU8 News that will be marching alongside these incredible students in our entire community in hopes that we can create lasting change so families can live without fear of gun violence. Back in Washington, Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced a plan to officially ban bump stocks. Bump stocks can modify semi-automatic rifles so they fire bullets repeatedly when the trigger is pulled down, resembling outlawed machine guns. The regulation would make bump stocks illegal by applying the machine gun law. There has been bipartisan opposition against bump stocks following their use by the Las Vegas shooter. President Trump signed a $1.3 trillion spending bill to fund the government through September. He says he approved the bill for national security reasons and will, quote, never sign a bill like this again. Hours before he treated or threatened to veto the bill on Twitter, he's upset with the Democrats for not including DACA protection or a resolution for Dreamers. I can tell you this, and I say this to DACA recipients, that the Republicans are with you. They want to get your situation taken care of. The Democrats fought us. They just fought every single inch of the way. They did not want DACA in this bill. Democrats argue President Trump is to blame why young undocumented immigrants are in limbo. Stocks fell for the second straight day after the president signed the spending bill. The Dow fell more than 400 points. It plunged 700 points yesterday after the president pushed for tariffs on China. In all, the Dow had its worst week since January of 2016. President Trump recently slapped billions of dollars on tariffs on China. Now mid-Missouri agriculture could be in trouble if China follows through on its tariff threat against the U.S. KMUA's Chelsea Haynes is in the studio to tell us how Missouri could be impacted. Earlier this morning, China unveiled its plans to impose tariffs on $3 billion of U.S. imports. One of those tariffs includes a 25% tax on pork products. So what exactly does that mean for mid-Missouri? I spoke with a 20-year veteran who teaches agriculture to high school students in Centralia. He says we lose out on a share of our largest export market. If we can't maintain a steady market for our products, then obviously we can't um, have a price that's going to be able to break even or make a profit for those producers. Nothing has been confirmed on China's end with this proposed tariff, but a former Bush administration official told CNN that what President Trump is doing could start a trade war and potentially mean big trouble for pork and profits in Missouri. In the studio, Chelsea Haynes, KMU 8 News. Here's what's happening right now. President Trump issued an order to ban most transgender troops from serving in the military. The White House memorandum says transgender people are, quote, disqualified from military services except under limited circumstances. The reason some might need, quote, substantial medical treatment. Trump first called for a ban on transgender troops last summer. Federal courts blocked the initial ban.
Megan said we had some rain today and more is on the way. Let's go to her for the latest. Thank you, Sarah. We did see a couple showers throughout the day today, and that's part of a larger system here. But as we zoom in closer to home, we do have a couple of light showers lingering to the north of I-70. The chance for rain is actually going to increase overnight, but we are going to see a drier day for Sunday. After that, a chance of rain does return. I'll time that all out here in a little bit. But our winds out the door right now are out of the east, 20 miles here in Columbia. Those are going to stay gusty as we head throughout the evening hours as well. Temperatures across the board, you can see quite a bit of a temperature gradient here. We are cooler up to the northwest. Temperatures at 44 degrees up in Macon, but 55 degrees down to the Lake of the Ozarks. That's due to a warm front that is passing by, associated with that low pressure system that brought our weather for the day. Now, as we move into the next couple of hours, temperatures are going to hold steady in the upper 40s for most of mid-Missouri, and we will still have that rain chance. I'll detail out your full rain timeline coming up here in a little bit. Attorney General Josh Hawley says his office has served 15 subpoenas in the investigation into Governor Greitens' charity organization. The mission continues. The investigation comes following reports that Greitens used the charity's donor and email list to start his political career in 2015. Hawley, the mission continues staff, former and the group itself, as well as individuals from the Greitens group have all received subpoenas. This is a very active investigation and it is progressing uh, by the day. I am pleased with the cooperation that we have received thus far from individuals who have been subpoenaed and who have responded to our subpoenas, and I am pleased with the evidence thus far that we have been able to collect. Hawley hopes the Missouri House and Senate pass legislation that would improve his subpoena powers, making future investigations easier. A bill heading to the president's desk would help protect victims of sex trafficking nationwide. KOMU 8's Sydney Olson is here in the studio to tell us how the bill could affect some popular websites. The Allow States and Victims to Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act of 2017 would hold websites accountable for facilitating or advertising sex trafficking. The bill would amend part of the Communications Decency Act of 1996, which prevents websites like Craigslist and Backpage from being charged for allowing their users to solicit sex trafficking. It comes after Missouri Senator Claire McCaskill helped lead an investigation into Backpage. Opponents of the, beer, of the bill fear it would limit freedom of speech online by forcing websites to censor user content. One board member of the Central Missouri Stop Human Trafficking Coalition says online ads for sex affects people in mid-Missouri. There's a long history of using Craigslist and Backpage um, for advertisement. And we've had survivors that we've worked directly with whose personal stories have included you know, being sold, being, having to be advertised on Backpage. Craigslist has already responded to the bill by taking down their personals pages. In the studio, Sydney Olson, KOMU 8 News. Doctors at the Truman VA Hospital in Columbia say they've cut opioid prescriptions by 34 percent. They say the hospital has found other ways to treat pain before prescribing opioids. The alternatives include special kinds of therapy and medicines that treat a specific pain. We go to physical therapy. We found that like in back pain, physical therapy seems to be the number one thing, aerobic conditioning. Cognitive behavior therapy is another thing that seems to help it. Jones says doctors will continue working on new ways to battle and prevent opioid addiction. Before taking your spring vacation, you might want to think twice about the safety of your home. Welcome back to KOMU 8 News at 9. We're taking a look over the Columbia Regional Airport throughout the day today. Temperatures held steady in the upper 40s and continue to have held steady around that temperature throughout much of the evening hours as well. We did see some rainfall today associated with the low pressure system passing by. Now that low pressure system is going to continue to affect our weather over tomorrow as well. You can see here quite a bit of a temperature gradient to the north of us. Temperatures pretty cool back in the 30s, but if you look to the south down towards Texas, temperatures in the 70s. That's a sign of what's to come over the next couple of days, especially next week. We will see a little bit of a warm up. Not quite warm as in the 70s, more like the 60s, but this is what more what we're going to be looking at over the next couple of days. Now that temperature gradient is associated with this low pressure system here. We do have a warm front that's cutting through a part of mid-Missouri here. And right ahead of that are those rain showers that we saw earlier today. 
As we zoom in closer to home here now, we can see on our satellite and radar just a couple of spotted showers up to the north of I-70, bringing some light rainfall. Our chance for rainfall does increase as we head into the overnight hours as that low pressure system starts to slide down here over mid-Missouri. That is going to remain to the north of I-70, but stopping the clock here at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, we are looking at a widespread rain event with light to moderate rainfall. As that starts to move out of the area, it will be about noon when we start to see some of those showers start to taper off as that low pressure system heads west. In the evening hours, we could even see a couple of flurries mainly to the northwest of Columbia right around 7 p.m. and in the early evening hours as well. But Saturday night into Sunday morning, we're expecting mostly cloudy skies. Conditions are going to dry up for Sunday, and we could even see a couple peaks of sunshine before the day is done. However, cloud cover will increase yet again Sunday into Monday. Monday is a significant chance for some rainfall and some thunderstorms as well. Those will become widespread throughout the day on Monday and bring quite a bit of rainfall with it as well. Now with the rainfall that we'll see overnight into tomorrow morning, primarily ending before noon, we're expecting less than a quarter of an inch throughout most of mid-Missouri here. But looking at our rain timeline, this isn't even our best chance for rain. We do have a 60% chance for tomorrow morning, but looking into next week, both Monday and Tuesday, we can see some thunderstorms with some significant rainfall as well. Right now our rainfall estimates are anywhere between an inch and a half to four inches so stay tuned with us here and we'll let you know what you can expect earlier next week closer to time. Now as we head into the overnight hours tonight, temperatures are not going to fall off too terribly much more. 47 degrees will be our low. Winds will be gusty though out of the east, gust up to 30 miles per hour. For tomorrow, we won't warm up but a couple more degrees. 50 degrees for the high, still gusty and some morning showers are still possible. Looking into the next three days, we do dry out for Sunday. But Monday and Tuesday, a chance for some rain returns. Next week is expected to be warmer. Temperatures Monday and Tuesday back in the 60s. This time of year calls for spring vacations. So while you're out enjoying spring break, crooks are up to no good, coming up steps to keep your stuff safe. A Columbia man who allegedly flashed a woman and her two kids near a bus stop is charged with sexual misconduct. John Snyder's bond is $5,000. He is not allowed anywhere near a park school or where children might be close by. A man from Columbia began a 23-year sentence in federal prison today for his role in a conspiracy to distribute meth through the mail. Federal agents and others arrested Zachary Fennell and three other men. He pleaded guilty to possessing meth with intent to distribute. He was also a felon in possession of a firearm. It's spring break for many people, which means rest, relaxation, and for some, robberies. Burglaries, to be specific. KOMUA's Jessica Porter is in the studio to tell us about a common mistake people make when they go out of town. That's right, Sarah. According to the Columbia Police Department data, burglaries from February to March increased by about 50%, and social media could be to blame. It's our second year living here on East Campus. Um, I got a call at it was like 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, from an unknown number. The call Jordan Nelmark got was from the Columbia Police Department saying three men had broken into her home. The side door had been kicked down completely. My checkbooks were gone. I had to cancel my bank account and get new checkbooks. For a little bit, I was a little uneasy. Nelmark and her roommates took the appropriate safety precautions, but they wished they had done one thing. All we had to do was set the alarm, and I'm sure it would have been a different circumstance, but... Even though technology can help a lot when it comes to security, it can sometimes do more harm than good. Detective Tom O'Sullivan says he sees a common mistake when it comes to spring break. Do not advertise your, your uh, vacation plans on social media. Thieves monitor Facebook and they look for uh, potential targets on Facebook. And if you and the whole family are down in Florida, that could put you at potential risk for a burglary. Other tips? You want to use some common sense when you go on vacation. Obviously, you want to properly secure your house, lock all the doors and windows. 
The Sheriff's Department also told me if you're planning on going out of town to make it appear as if you are at home by leaving a light on or keeping a car in the driveway. In the studio, Jessica Porter, KMU 8 News. Good advice there. And they say home is where the heart is. That is correct, but in this case, it's where the winds are too. Sports is next. From the Ford Sports Desk, KOMU 8 Sports. This week it's official. Winter is over. The snow is hopefully done with. And that means leaves on the trees, flowers in the ground, and of course, baseball season. Fans all over the state are preparing for the Cardinals and Royals. But people here and around the country are noticing a different team, the Missouri Tigers baseball squad. Coming into today, the Tigers have jumped out to a 17-5 record in 2018. But equally as impressive as that, is their win streak at home, 14 straight. The Tigers haven't lost in the confines of Taylor Stadium in nearly a month. Tonight, the Mississippi State Bulldogs are in town putting that streak on the line. The 14-game home winning streak is the Tigers' longest home winning streak since 2006. You may remember the ace on the mound that year was none other than Max Scherzer. That team would end up making it to the Super Regional. But let's take a look at the numbers behind Missouri's success this year. A lot of it has to do with the Tigers' offense. Missouri is outscoring opponents 188-76. to The Tigers are consistent at the plate with a batting average for the team that's nearly 300. And from a pitching perspective, they've got an ERA nearly four points lower than the teams they've faced. And as for tonight, the Tigers are up 4-1. to one. Sophomore pitcher TJ Sykema, the lefty, was on the hill for seven strong innings, racking up seven strikeouts. Tigers catcher Brett Bond has had a solid couple of weeks at the plate. He had three hits on three at-bats with two RBIs. We'll have highlights from tonight's game at 10. Missouri softball also in action today, taking its 18-15 and 15 record down to Arkansas to open a weekend series with the Razorbacks. Mizzou's SEC struggles continued, dropping this one 3-1. to one. A second-inning error by Missouri led to two of Arkansas's three runs. The Tigers have won just one of their last seven games. The Missouri Tigers were bounced early from the NCAA tournament last weekend, but the madness doesn't stop for the school still in it. With no shortage of compelling storylines, 10 teams still remain in the tournament, hoping to claw their way to San Antonio for the Final Four next week. Eight teams are in action tonight for the Sweet Six. First game featured one seed Kansas Jayhawks taking on the Clemson Tigers. The Jayhawks dominated for much of the game until Clemson got it within four in the final minutes, but Kansas prevailed 80-76, to punching its ticket to the Elite Eight. The other remaining one seed, the Villanova Wildcats, squared off against the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Opposite from the Kansas game, this one was actually close throughout, but eventually Nova would pull away and win big 90-72. Later on, Syracuse will face Duke, and the Red Raiders of Texas Tech will take on the Purdue Boilermakers. In local sports, the all-new Capital City High School in Jefferson City has finally chosen a mascot. The school's nickname will be the, Cap the Cavaliers, with colors of royal blue and silver. The Capital City Cavaliers it has a nice ring to it. Thanks for joining us. That's all for sports. Welcome back to KOMU News. How much would you pay to make your dogs feel comfortable on a plane? Well, can you believe dog owners in Hong Kong can pay a little more than $30,000 for their dogs? A pet-friendly company named Life Travel fills the seats in the flights with people and pets in the cabin. The Life Travel founder plans on opening an office in the U.S. and other countries soon. Now here's a look at what we're following on KOMU 8 News at 10. President Trump is on his third national security advisor in about a year, and the new one is already facing backlash. Why the president says he made the change and what it could mean for national security and negotiations, that's coming up at 10. Megan. It's going to be a rainy morning tomorrow, but temperatures are going to hold steady around the 50 degree mark. That rainfall is expected to end around noon. It will be cloudy for the rest of the day. Sunday is supposed to be dry, but for next week, for both Monday and Tuesday, it's going to be rainy. Oh, rainy. It doesn't yeah. feel like spring at the right. Well, no, I guess it doesn't. showers, so maybe yeah. it will be in the 60s. Can't do any better than that? Try hard. Right. <laughs> That's our time for now. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.